All right, let's get this started. Oh crap, do I have, I have myself mm -hmm. unmuted. <clears throat> All right, cool. So we're back for another week of Death and Taxes, and we're doing our usual Monday stream, which is just pretty standard legacy mono white taxes. Nothing special, no shell eyes, no fancy sideboard tech. Just <clears throat> one of one Avenger, three Crusader is my current build. Kind of a hedge against pile and stuff versus Delver. But yeah, so I'm probably just gonna sit with sit comfortable with a list like this for a while, at least until Brightling actually gets out on Moto. Then we'll probably swap out Crusader, Crusader, Revoker for like a Plains and two Brightlings. And then cut this cavern, obviously, but still not a hundred percent sure. I think I kind of like the list. I could I could do with or without this cavern of souls. It's just kind of there because it is. It's a hedge against combo decks that have force of wills, like sneak and show and stuff. It's a hedge against miracles, where and it's worse. And it's uh it's if you get silver. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. Obviously. Bad against Wasteland, good against Days. And to a lesser extent, Force of Will. Because they usually have that less often. Obviously worse against the Blood Moon decks. Worse against the other Wasteland decks, the Mirror and stuff. Things where you're trying to cast your Council's Judgments, your Cataclysms. Anyhow, we'll just get started. We're not doing anything special with the list. Did I update? Um... Stream Decker. Yeah, it's updated. Cool. Let's go Competitive Legacy. So we actually managed a 4-1 on Friday. We broke our curse of last week. We 4 one both of our... both of our leagues. This league closed right before, I think this is right before M19 launch, <clears throat> if I recall correctly, because I know uh, Brightling's supposed to be, I think, like the ninth or something, so it makes sense that these leagues close around then. Alright. Alt Nicolo. Um, hmm. This hand is a little bit dicey. I think it's good enough, but it's like it's kind of close. The one white source being wastelandable is dangerous, but we have multiple stone forges. We have revoker. I think it's like good enough, but I'm not super happy about it. No covered island ponder. I'm inclined to say miracles. Could be any number of blue based combo decks as well. But the lack of fetch land in a basic island is two. Uh, that's a good draw. What am I going to lead on here? Probably just basic planes pass. If it's Miracles, this hand kind of sucks. Although if it's Storm or Sneak... Oh, if it's Sneak, this hand is good. They did not shuffle. If it's Sneak, we have Caracas and Frank's Revoker. I'm leaning towards Miracles. Maybe not. Right on time. I don't think this is, if this is something like Storm or Sneak, I don't think I have enough information to just slam Revoker on LED or Sneak Attack here. I think I'm just going to, I almost want a port to get more information, but I think just slamming Stoneforge is fine. We'll grab Batterskull. We have a second sword if they're Miracles to grab the Sword of Fire Nice anyway. 
just going to counterspell this. Yeah, alright, so they're miracles. That's fine. Full. Could be that they just drew the Volk and played it for turn, or are they just not are they not miracles? Are they just some blue red deck? I wanna play this Stoneforge again, but my opponent has five cards in hand, so I probably wouldn't get Batter Skull. I think it's gonna die. Actually Stoneforge plus Mom here, which is probably worse than Wasteland. I don't want I don't want my opponent to play Jace next turn. So we're gonna Wasteland. First, play around like a lightning bolt or something. Another counterspell. A daze, perhaps? Alright, two counterspells is interesting. Not entirely familiar with lists that play multiple counterspells and just like have a volcanic. I'm still thinking miracles is the most likely. Yeah. No land is very good for me. The search for his candle will let them hit their land drops, though. So I don't know if I can just get away with using Rashadenport to punish them. I could Mom plus Revoke, or what do I even revoke here? There's like nothing to revoke. It flickers for a clock. Maybe I do just Mom plus Port them just because I'm not doing anything else, and then next turn I can go land four. Flickerus plus port. Seems fine. Get my mother of runes online. Now they probably can trip. Preordain. Maybe they are blue red. I mean, they could be like miracles with more cantrips for mentors. Bottom, bottom. Wow, no land off of search. Oh, do they keep on top? Yeah, so I assume they kept the preordain, hoping they would find a land, and then they pushed two to the bottom and then didn't. So now we have Flicker Wisp to attack our opponent with at least. We have Clock on the table. And opponent's really down on resources. Mill Force. Okay. They do get to flip their search. Okay, so they are married. Always is a good draw. Although I kind of want to keep porting them. We'll attack first, see what happens. The issue is if I play Thalia and then port them, then I don't leave the Caracas up to protect the Thalia. Although I guess I could just port their only white source here, so yeah, I think Shields down on Thalia for one turn is fine. They won't be able to terminus me here until I untap the Caracas again. Unless they, like, in response to this port, cast a brainstorm and then naturally hit the terminus or some nonsense. Sure. That's totally fine with me if that's how they're going to spend their turn. Reveal Brainstorm. And now we're just set up to clock them with a the Mother of Runes. They can't cast another spell this turn. Because of the Thalia. I 
I'm definitely porting them. I might as well play Gta here. I don't think I want to add more to the board. <clears throat> I want to be able... Mm, maybe it's wrong, because they, they, have the, they only have the one white source. If I keep porting them, they can actually just never terminus me effectively. So I can just revoke Jace the Mind Sculptor or something. And this is, if I play GTA Attack for 5, they go to 11. Equip GTA Attack for 5. They go to 6. They're dead in 3 hits regardless, actually. So let's play the GTA. I don't want to overcommit. GTA does put shields on Crocus again, though. Hit him for five. Port the the planes again. Prevent terminus. Unless they again, they do have the brainstorm in hand. They could go for the blind terminus off the top. That'd be pretty punishing. They tap their white mana though, so can't get terminus at least. It's looking good here. I feel pretty comfortable with the position. Another evoker. Yeah, I'm just not I'm not playing any more creatures. Nope. I said no moto. Don't equip the Thalia or the Flicker Wisp is the question. I think I want to equip the Flicker Wisp, because I think my opponent mm, no, I want to equip the Thalia. My opponent is less likely to want to kill this Thalia because I have this Krakus. I have this mom in play anyway, so it doesn't matter a huge amount, but... I could be getting Terminus next turn, which is something I should be mindful of. They did set it up on the Brainstorm, and now they have two white sources. But I can Krakus my Thalia in response now. Tundra. They have to use snow-covered planes plus another land just to terminus me here. Yeah. Let the trigger resolve, so they have to pay two. Then pick up the Thalia. So I could go Thalia plus Avenger and leave up Caracas. Although just playing one creature leaves lethal on the table, but I imagine my opponent has a lot of sorts of plowshares and stuff in their hand from the the Mother of Runes turning them off for so long. So the more threats I present, the harder it is for my opponent to, you know, obviously kill them all. It's gonna be a bummer my opponent has another counter spell. But let's run out Thalia, Avenger, leave up Caracas. This GTA means basically any creature, if I get to get far enough with it, is now lethal, because my opponent's a 6 life. Anything short of a Mother of Runes or a Stone Forge. Alright, scratch that. Everything is now lethal. They pitch a second search for his camp to... I want to play Avenger here. My opponent can't actually, like, Snapcaster for a plow or something yet. So if they just don't have a plow, I don't want them to just be able to... Although... The GTA could ping off the snap, but then they wouldn't be dead. Yeah, the, the Avenger's the only thing that can put lethal in play through a Snapcaster right now. Oh. 
one one pride bit donation from Aisha Nine that says hello. Hello, Aisha Nine, how's it going? Alright, so I imagine this Frakes and Rogers not long for the or not this Frakes and This Sarah Avengers not long for this world. It's even worth the equip. If I equip, I have three mana left, and then I can still revoke her plus a file. It's probably fine. Tech. When it kills it, I should nine with uh, another pride bit saying, "Nice shirt." Yes, I do like this shirt. It is the uh, the pride. Magic planeswalker symbol, path to exile. Interesting. They are. I saw the. There was a bunch of posts on Reddit about it, and I was like, "This shirt looks really cool." I want to get this. So this path is much better than a plow here for me. I can definitely use more lands. Now we will play Frexian Revoker, name Jace the Mind Sculptor, since that's actually like an actual card that I'm scared of now. Mind Sculptor, Aether Bile, and Pass. Are they gonna like snap path here? No, they're just gonna activate Ascanta. Revealing nothing. Nice. Opponent has Council's Judgment. I probably shouldn't have F6 through that, but I mean, I would have. I would. I don't even think I would have gained four life. I think I just would would take this GTA dying. Realistically, it's just not worth it because I could just gain four life and then they just kill the Revoker. Stone Forge is good. I still have two equipment in my deck. I'll attack if they want to. Plat. They have to snap. Brainstorm, and then I can plow the snap out of the way. Yep. Targeting Brainstorm, because that's the only card they can cast here. Just kill it. I think I want to get Batter Skull with the Stoneforge, honestly. Most of my creatures are already going to be kicked for lethal. And I want just more creatures, and Batter Skull presents a recurring threat, because I just have enough mana to cast it repeatedly. I could get Sword and put it into play right now. Only has three cards in hand. Hmm. It's actually kind of tough. Batter Skull or Sword? So, Sword actually makes us that I have lethal next turn. Batter Skull does not. I think I have enough creatures. Let's go with Sword. Are we using Spell Pierced? God, I hope not. Oh, I just flashed by the brainstorm. Yeah. Spillverse doesn't really make sense in Miracles, so I wasn't exactly playing around it. Wait, is that two vaults in my opponent's deck? Interesting. I take it they're not on the back to basics version, then. They're probably on Blood Moons on the side, and Blood Moons and Parablasts. It's kind of unfortunate. Resplendent Angel waiting room. Move over brightly. We play more. Resplendent Angel is not what I would consider very uh, death and taxes adjacent. I'm going to slam Jace here. We get Revoker on Jace pulls equip, but that doesn't beat Plow. Fate sealing me. That seems aggressive. Just hoping the last card in my hand is a dud. I mean, it's a 3 3 flying for a 3. Yeah, but like, that's not good enough for modern or legacy, right? That's the issue. It is a really sweet card. 
three, four, five, seven mana. So I could violin, equip, double port still. I actually port all their white sources, interestingly enough. Alternatively, I could like port their white sources. Yeah, port their white sources, then violin revoker, but then it gets chased. Oh god, hang on, this is tough. Because if I, I equip it, the sword right now, it doesn't actually protect it from anything, but I let them get a Jace activation. If I don't file, but I can take them off of white to protect their revoker from a plow and then possibly kill them. I think it's better to take them off of white, honestly. With the way they face sealed me, I think they might just face seal me again. I think I want to port and then just Violent Revoke on the end step, because the sword's not going to protect it from anything but the Jace Balance, and Violent the end of turn also protects from Jace Balance. <laughs> it's a sweet card, don't get me wrong. Like, that card does look really cool, especially in standard with stuff like Shalai and, uh, and Lyra. That card looks very cool. Brightling looks cool because it looks very powerful in Legacy, which is a format I happen to enjoy a lot. Resplendent Angel looks cool because it's a really cool standard card. Yeah, see, they're face sealing me again. Which is going to be risky if... They don't have any more white sources here, but I think I have almost guaranteed lethal. Yeah, <laughs> if it had two toughness, maybe it'd be better in DNT, because then you can suddenly tutor for it. Martyr. I don't even know if Martyr Proc wants it. Martyr Proc just like goes way bigger than that card is. They already have Sarah Ascendant. That's like a one mana version of that. Except you don't have to pay six mana to activate it or whatever. And it's, they don't have consistent life gain, right? They just have the burst with Martyr of Sands. So you get like one angel. And then you have to wait till you play this on three. And then you play Martyr Kraken on four. Whereas you could just go Sarah's in it on one to Martyr Kraken on two, which seems a lot better. Or like Squash and Hawk to Martyr Kraken on three. Oh, that seems fine. All right, unless one of the last two cards in their hand is a Sword Supplier Shares, we just win, right? Chase the Mind Sculptor. I wish I could name Flooded Strand here. Would be nice. Let's try to kill my opponent. Please die. Yes, they died. We did it. Cool. My play actually worked out well. It didn't work out taking them off of white sources. They had that fetch land. They did play as if the last card in my hand didn't do anything, and they didn't play like EE on 2 to protect from possible vile lethal. That might have actually been smart. Oh, no, they didn't have the... No, they had exactly enough mana to do that, right? They had played on vile, a vile on... Er, an EE on 2 to protect against the one case that they die there. Did they bottom or top with that Chase Fate Seal? It had to have been bottom, right? Because they drew Batter Skull. They kept the Batter Skull on top? Were the last cards in their hand like forceful blue card or something? Was that their plan? Seems weird to keep that on top still. I think that builds up being different than typical Martyr Proc, like Ghostly Prison. Oh god. Please start cutting Ghostly Prison Martyr Proc decks. I hate that card so much. Just because it's so obnoxious to play against as as Death and Texas variants. Um I think it's just Council's Judgment and Cataclysm for this matchup, right? All those other cards suck. Cut, Gite, Shave, Revokers, Shave. Um, so my opponent played multiple Preordains. I'm more inclined to think that they're on more Mentors rather than less, so I kind of want to leave in a certain, uh, like, a higher density of Plows. 
but I'm not 100% because we played the, that game for a decently long chunk of time and we didn't see a single mentor. Yeah, there's some some serious free free Stoneforge hype going around, and I'm I'm all aboard the I'm all aboard the unbanned Stoneforge train. I've started kind of trying to theorize what decks, what the different taxes decks would look like with Stoneforge unbanned, and it's a debate between just like cutting Leon and Arbiter or like somehow trying to make the two mesh, which they're obviously in direct contention with each other. Let me figure out if this is how I want to sideboard. Eh, that's probably fine. We'll see game two if they have more mentors. Yeah, the, it's a very weird anti-synergy in your deck, and there's a there's a reasonable chance that as Death and Texas, you could just cut Leon Arbor completely and just move to like um Field of Ruin and like some tech edges or Field of Ruin plus Temples and like Mono White Eltrazi Taxes. Yeah, I think I would definitely cut Leon in from uh, black white uh, against miracles. Is this hand good enough? My opponent has more. My opponent's not on back to basics miracles, so wasteland is better here. But it's like stoneforge into this hand feels like it's not good enough, but it feels like it's okay. Yeah, well, we'll keep it. I think I would 100% cut Leon in from black white Eldrazi taxes. You could even like open yourself up to playing fetch lands in that deck, so the mana gets better. You can play some number of fetch lands. You have to supplement it with more colorless sources, plays like some fetid heats or something. Second port is a really good draw. Wish I could draw a vial, though. But yeah, I could definitely see just cutting Leon and Arbor and making the mana base a lot better. Leon Arbor has kind of been the worst card in Black Widow throughout the Texas for a while. Yeah, you play you easily play Marsh Flats and Fetid Heats. You're worse, you're better against Blood Moons now. You're better against your own mana base, which has been an issue for a long time. You have to play like eh, I think like two basic planes, one swamp, one godless shrine, plus like two or three fetches is probably fine. To like two fetid heaths. Maybe a field of ruin or something. I'm a, I'm a really bad mana base math person, so I would probably try to sit on my hands and wait for someone else to do that better than I do. I'm not fetching out Tundras aggressively. I'm gonna play... I'm gonna play either Port or... I think I'm gonna play... Hmm, I'm gonna play Port, because I will likely just play 2 Dropless Wasteland the next turn. Although, if I, I should play Wasteland here in case I want to play Wisp. So I could wisp my own wasteland. We'll see. Then we go as a black white Eldrazi featuring Thali. Yeah, it kind of like blurs the line. That might not be a bad thing. I've always kind of hated Leon and Arbor a little bit. Like the gotcha moments are really good, but the gotcha moments happen a lot more online than in than in paper as well. Because people just like don't know how Moto works. Let's grab Sword. I'm gonna give them both anyway. We're gonna have Sword right now. Yeah, Black White Eldrazi featuring Talia isn't necessarily the worst thing that the, the deck could be doing. Counterbalance? And they left Counterbalance in against me. Interesting. But they give me the access to put in the sword. I think I'm just going to Wasteland them plus leave the sword up then. Won't cast a spell yet. I think they know the top card of their library still from the ponder, right? Unless they fetched. And it doesn't shuffle, draws a card. Oh, and then they cracked. Okay. Wait, no, then they cast another ponder. Doesn't shuffle, draws a card. So they did actually know the top card of their library there. Now they don't. See if we get Vendillion clicked here. There are a lot of things that open open up when you when you free Stoneforge. I don't think I want to equip my opponent's five cards in hand. The Stoneforge can very, very easily die. I'm kind of down for attacking. My opponent would have to flesh and snap, and then I just trade snap for this Stoneforge Mystic, which is fine. 
attack, play, revoker on chase is my likeliest option. And then once I get a four mana, I could like Stoneforge, grab Batter Skull, plus put it into Batter Skull or something. Maybe I should have got the Batter Skull first, just to force my opponent to answer this. Because I kind of time walked myself almost. I don't think Stoneforge will be like bad, bad. I think there will easily be a lot of decks that just want to be playing. Stoneforge Mystics, I think most fair white decks will just easily just put Stoneforge Mystic into them. Not necessarily like Jessica Control, maybe, but I think like Junk, Taxes, some sort of uh, like the black white, whatever decks. Um, what am I doing here? Revoking Jace. They're like they're sitting on like brainstorm to try and counter one of my spells. Is that they're playing this whole time? Oh, they just blind flip the snap. That's rude. Ale of the dead guy variety. Not, I mean, yeah, kind of, I guess. A little bit different in modern. Doesn't change my thing. That was a blind flip, right? I'm pretty sure that was a blind flip. Maybe it wasn't. I'm too lazy to do the math. Sure. Alright, we can get, try to sneak this vial down. But also, if we resolve the Stoneforge, we can just grab Batter Skull and make a threat here, which is also useful. So let's just slam Stoneforge first. If it gets counterbalanced, we just play Aether Vial. Supreme Verdict, alright, that's a good card to know about. They should probably plow in response. And they might not care, they might just be lining up to Supreme Verdict me next turn. That's fine, we can put in the Batter Skull and then we can Flicker Wisp it if we need to. If that gets countered, which it probably won't because they don't have a lot of threes, we can also try Aether Vial. Legacy duels are getting pretty pricey. Yeah, that's an understatement. Those things are shooting up. The best time to buy your duels was like five years ago. Next best time is right now because they will just keep going up. It's gonna verdict me, I assume. That's fine. We're gonna put it in the batter school just to get into play. We can Vile plus Wisp this turn. Because we can Vile to check if the coast is clear. That's another Snapcaster Ranger, right? So either Vile resolves. You know, it's a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, at least people can play an Empty Geo. That's always nice. Empty Geo is going to quickly become, like, the home of Legacy. Like, it kind of is, kind of became for Vintage after VMA. It's just so much easier to play. But even, even then, some of these cards in, in Legacy and Vintage Online are getting expensive again. So my opponent has two snaps in their hand. Did I X out the snap? I thought it was revealed again. They need six lands to snap Verdict me, though, and they... I can snap Disenchant, actually, so this is what they're probably going to do here. You know. I don't know. I didn't think about that too much. Now we have Flicker Wisp in play. Opponent has... I guess opponent still has a lot of cards in hand. You can buy a decent car. <laughs> yeah, there was. So I remember there was something. It might have been a Yu Gi Oh collection, though. A story about some guy who, like, sold his Yu Gi Oh or Magic collection or something literally for a, like, a brand new car. I forget if that was explicitly magic. Alright, so we can start porting the crap out of our opponent at least. Plow the 
West. Yep. Unfortunate. Uh, we're going to port the Ascanta now in case they play a land and they want to just activate the Ascanta. Now they don't have the mana to do it. Question is if I want to plow this snap. I don't think so. I'm at 23. Some dude in Japan saw this for. Well, we have Cavern and Vile, so I feel pretty. I mean, if we can just draw like a recruit or something or a business, if you're drawing lands, we won't be. Start by porting the Azcanta this time. They might just activate it. In which case, I just don't use my other port. What are they casting now? Are they just gonna like snap target ponder, ponder in their main phase? Just for the beatdowns? Is this their plan? Might actually plow a snapcaster now. If this is the if their plan is just to beat me to death with snapcaster mages. Like how aggressively they're they're firing this one off. Like I think most miracle players, I guess maybe maybe they're trying to find lands. That's the thing. I could have easily seen my opponent just activate Ascanta in response to the port rather than just aggressively flashing in a Snapcaster Mage to port me or to uh, to ponder. I'm not gonna plow it though, or at least try to plow it. I guess I kind of forgot this counterbalance was in play. Should have uh, should have plowed in response to the ponder. Gives me more information because they have to blind flip and possibly show me something, but now they know the top card of their deck. Recruiter of the guard? Really appreciate a recruiter. Eh, that's not bad. Could still definitely use a recruiter. So my opponent I'm concerned about if they have a mentor here. Maybe I should put the polluted delta. Would be an interesting line. Just to see if they crack the fetch. So they just really want to draw their card. Yeah, I think I should put the Ascanta, not the Tundra, first. Doesn't look like it matters, though. Casting a Brainstorm in the draw step deal. I guess it's better for them than casting a Brainstorm in the upkeep. But that's why they floated the mana last, during the upkeep as well. Because it makes the. It would make the second Rashawn Port activation worthless. This way we managed to attack them with both the ports. That's kind of mean. They even know how to cast engineering explosives through a Thalia. They're smarter than. Oh crap, I'm at seven minutes. I need to play faster. What am I doing? Sit here lollygagging through all my games against miracles. Oh no, don't play the mom. My opponent has a <laughs> has an E on one. I imagine they're just gonna crack the E. I'm gonna time out to myself because I'm dumb and never read the clock. I don't know why you uh, got auto modded. I never, I always forget about auto mod. I never turn that off all the time. Why would that even auto mod that? That's so weird. To put his daughter through school. 
This is why I need actual mods. Hang on, like, cloudless in response. That's what it looks like. Yep. Path it. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm supposed to concede here, just to uh, save time. This game is definitely still winnable as my beef, but I'm just, I'm so far down on clock. All right, maybe this game is suddenly less winnable. Oh no, I'm done. I played this into the. All right, yeah, I played this into the. I wasn't thinking. We're gonna concede, go faster here. We I think we are pretty dead. My opponent has three cards in hand there. We have six and a half minutes on the clock left. We are better served trying to win a game three than trying to win that game two. Drawing the the ninety fifth land, not great. Um, opponent has engine explosives in their deck. I don't think that changes anything for me. Disenchants and EEs. Might want to cut plows. Maybe these aren't on that many mentors. Cut a plow, bring Revoker back in. See this? Oh, Trogpod, you're back with the Thor references again. I remember these. I still don't understand what all the Thor references are for, but. We did. We. It was a very hasty concession, mostly because we don't have a lot of time left on the clock. Uh, sand's fine. We have Cataclysm. The sand the card's really good, right? And we have Recruiter. Again, wish I had Aether Vial, but not a lot I can do about that. And just has a lot of good cards in it, though. We're going to grab probably Sword here. Right on time, Mother of Runes. If I had played Mother and it didn't die, I might have grabbed Batter Skull here, but we just need to grab Sword. Since my Sword is much more likely to die. What do they do with that preordain? Bottom, bottom. Maybe they kept a one-lander and they'll die now. Sorry, I was going to try and do No problem, Trogpod. Nice to see you. Just good to tune in whenever you're... Whatever you're doing. It does not shuffle, so they probably found their land. Um, we're going to play Mom here now. Leave up Sword Activation, or Stoneforge Activation for Sword. Anything stick out in M19? Nothing in M19 yet. Still waiting on Brightling from Battle Bond to hit Moto. Nothing in M19 seems particularly Death and Taxes playable. I live in fear of Vendillion Click every time I do this into three open mana. Alright, so we have Mom up, so let's just bash them and see what happens. They might have just Disenchant here, that's what I imagine. But we still need to, like, pour them. Yeah, this is just a Disenchant, sure. This Cataclysm might be good, eventually. We need to establish... I guess we can't really establish more of a board. We can establish a better clock than a Stoneforge Mystic. We only need to keep one creature. My what is my opponent doing with an Underground Sea and two Volcanic Islands in their deck? Um... 
fire away with the stone forge. I think I'm casting recruiter here. I'm just gonna recruit a flicker wisp. My opponent supreme verdicts me. Yeah, whatever. These recruiters just find recruiters for a million years. Brainstorm set up terminus. That's what it looks like. Yeah, this is definitely a terminus. They have that pause in their draw step. Now we're gonna recruit for a recruiter probably. Depending on what they they like land slam jace, we just cancel judgment it. That's what this looks like. Could cataclysm it, but we don't have a creature in play for that. Sure. Well, let's draw Aether Vial, so I can just Aether Vial plus Council's Judgment. What a nice force. Rude. We have this Cataclysm, which is my last resort here. Pitching Snap. Okay. Cataclysm will luckily also kill this chase, but I would like something in play before I blow up everything and kind of reset the board. Since it's just down to both of us top decking, my opponent has cantrips in their deck. Ooh, counterbalance is scary. Progress is good. Let's hope this Thalia doesn't get countered. Try to plow this Thalia. Two mana. I'm curious what the underground scene my opponent's deck is for. Yeah, now they're gonna like plow plus second plow. Kind of want the land, honestly. But I'd also rather them just use two removal spells here. We have five lands right now. So we still can't get to land plus cataclysm or anything like that. Or cataclysm plus land creature. I don't think I I don't think I want to be playing my lands here. They have a three. Oh, that's so gross. So just draw a Thalia here, so we can Cataclysm, land Thalia, or like a Stoneforge Mystic would be great. Thalia's fine. Alright, now we just have to Cataclysm them. We'll leave Caracas, but it doesn't really matter. And before, four on top. Brainstorm into the four on top. Alright, I'll concede to that. We have four minutes on the clock. We're not beating that. Could be a desperate brainstorm for a force, I hope. Nope, they have another chase. Gross. Another brain. Oh, what is this? Snap brainstorm to put a two on top? Jeez. This counterbalance is brutal. Yeah, that second chase was a real bummer. We probably could have had this. Probably had a very decent chance of winning with just a Thalia in play, two lands. Opponent on one land, kill the chase. They just have a counterbalance. 
Unless they'd hit the two after I cast Capitalism, that would have been. Then I would have had a third land drop to play Flicker Wisp. Oh, well, would have hit it. Hit a three, go ahead. Just have the Council Judgment on top still? Yep. Alright, we're done. Bummer. I definitely felt like we were we were decent decently positioned to win that match. Did not work out in our favor. The I think we could have we could easily take over that game if that cataclysm resolves. It's the it was the brainstorm into another Jace that really nailed nail in the coffin. Although I suppose the force of will for the the force of will for the council's judgment was kind of a bummer too. Thirteen losses, nineteen wins. The age-old tradition of starting a one in these legacy brackets. Blingan's stories. Uh, wow, this camera still sucks. Although this hand isn't great, even with even if this is basic planes, I'd probably, eh, I'd probably keep it was basic planes. But I wouldn't be happy about it. Be like mom into stone forge dev wasteland my opponent. This battle still sucks, but this being a cavern, I, d I can't keep this hand. And we have to keep this, and we have a white source, so sweet. I'm playing against reanimator. All right, so we're probably dead. Oh, I guess it could be pile. Could be no turbidus plays more greens, right? Maybe no, they do. I don't know. We'll find out. Not elves, at least. Thank God. Could be Jund. Could be dead guy. What color are they making? Oh, is it the Mardu deck? I saw Mardu like it's like check pile, but instead of. Uh, Instead of blue, you lean into uh, the other. You lean into white for like lingering souls and I'm trying to remember what else they play. Lingering souls a bunch of for like really good sideboard cards. They play like Liliana of the Last Hope, which is probably gonna savage me here, or Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Oh yeah, looting sure. Yeah, they play Looting, Punishing Fire, combo with Lingering Souls and such. This card, Therapy, Blood Moon. Oh, and they just probe me in. I, no, they can't Therapy me here. Uh, they can use the, uh... They can use the Death Rite to Therapy me if they want to. Because they have to spend a mana on it. We can have six now they know my hand. I only have two cards left, though. Yep, I only have one card left. I imagine they take the Prelate here. I feel like putting this on one is pretty good against my opponent. I should find their deck list. I'm not familiar. They might take Recruiter just so I can't like recruit a bunch of Wisps. If that's the case, I need to find a deck list. Opponent thinking about it too, I suppose. Where are the lists that I was seeing? I, I keep seeing them on Twitter. I've never actually seen a list that they actually did. Here we go. This looks like a list that they're playing. They named Recruiter, that makes some sense. We'll see how many of these cards they play over the course. So Prelate looks like it wants to go on one. We only get bo we get bodied by like Punishing Fire or Colgon's Command. But they have Fatal Push, Inquisition, Thought Seize, Faithful Saluting, two Diabolkies in the main. Jeez, it's almost correct to put it on two or three. That's the issue here. <clears throat> Guess they don't have three mana without another land. That's a good draw. Actually, I can't just I just can't play this thing Prelate. I now realize. 
Wasteland doesn't do anything when they have two death rates. We'll just port. Um, take them off of red. Oh, whoops, what? Oh, that's a wasteland shit. Oops. Definitely thought I clicked on the port there. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well, they didn't do anything with it. Now I just gave, I gave them food for the death rates that they only need to use once. Not necessarily incorrect, but also, again, not necessarily correct either. We'll see how it works out. Sure. I'm gonna fire off here. This is like a therapy, we're just dead. This is like a Lily the Last Hope, also dead. This feels like it's a uh, planeswalker to make him four mana. Oh, they're just flashing back looting? Oh, jeez. Thank God. Holy crap. We are so alive. That's their that's their play that they're gonna use all these lands in the graveyard for? Deal. Pitch Bedlam Nerf Litter. Oh, this one list doesn't play Bedlam Nerf Litter. But I have seen lists that do. Plow. I need to plow this pyro before it gets more out of hand. Um, yeah, it's gonna cost two. Do I want to wasteland my opponent? Probably. I can take them off of red, so they have to use death rights to make red mana. They do, granted, they have like three, four pieces of food for the death rights. I could technically attack there. Kill all three elementals if they triple block. I can flick risk one elemental, just first strike the other two. Basic mountain, sure. Second young pyro, sure. Um I wanna prelate on one in response to that. Probably. They don't have another spell to cast here, I don't think. They can't even cast the spell without activating these death rites first. I'll let it resolve. They have to activate a death rate, and if they do, then we can prel it. Because they can't act they can't cast a one drop to Thalia without making another mana. Nothing. I almost want to put this on like two or something. I have no guarantee that they're on the Punishing Fire Grove version, but with Faithless Looting, it leads me to think that they would be. So that's kind of a form of card advantage from the deck. They can buy back Punishing Fires and discard them. Put it on one. They need to find a Grove and a Punishing Fire. So we'll put it on just one. I could revoke these Death Rites. Ooh, that's interesting. I'm in for that. I need to get this Flickrest from play to start beating them down, but I also want to counter a removal spell with it. They're gonna trade me, I assume. Deal. Death right. So now we're actually stuck at a little bit of an impasse here. We can start porting them so they actually are just super taxed on mana as well. I want to put in this Flicker Wiz, but I don't want to get blown out, is the issue. That kind of sucks. Maybe I'm supposed to just put in this Flicker Wiz. Take them off of red. They're not anywhere close to casting something like Lingering Souls. I think it has like a looting with red. Oh no, mm, it's because the prelate's on one. I don't think anything in their deck. I think white is the splash color in this deck. Might be more worth it to take them off of. I can't take them off of black though. Like 
two cards in hand. We'll just wait. We kind of need to gain card advantage here. So if I don't port them, no, we're going to play this second vial, I think. Oh, no, I can't. The prelate. Alright. Continue to sit on our sit on our hands here. We need to draw a lot more lands to cast the sword. Ooh, that is a good card to draw. Because it can... One, two, it actually technically could get blocked, but then we have the Flickers to back it up. We should be fine here. Need one more mana to cast, like, Lily the Last Hope here or something? Let's see if they have it. I wonder what they would ping off. The Revoke or the Thalia first? Just souls? Oh, that's fine. It is a little obnoxious. Now this mirror center can be blocked better, but we drew another land. That gets us closer to the sword. I think this crusader is a safe attack. They have to block with like I get to kill a lot of their stuff. And if they don't block properly, we can blow them out with flicker wisp. They might just chum block it. And block with five. Five's the smart block. They're thinking about it. Yep. Six. Okay. Jeez. Um. So now we don't even need to use the wisp. We can just kill off a bunch of their stuff. Actually, we can just first strike, kill off the two spirits, and then flicker my mirror crusader. So do that. We should have a tag with Thalia too, just so I can flicker the Thalia, cast the sword. Um, my opponent has like a million mana now. Maybe we want to start taking them off of white so they can't cast more lingering souls in the future. I'm, I'm tapped out right now. I don't have anything to, to do. Worst case here is like Slam Lily. Best case is just souls, sure. Wisp Plow. Can't cast. Can't cast. Maybe I just need to get this Thalia killed so I can cast this sort of fire and ice. <laughs> That's not unreasonable. Let's just attack with the Thalia, see if it dies. My Thalia is not obviously not holding back my opponent, who has like 9,000 lands in play. My opponent might sense this and just chub block or just take it, but either of those is better. Oh, sure. Kind of an odd block. I don't want to get blown up by like another wisp or something. I just want this Talia dead. I'll trade with a death rate. Attack with both with both what? Like the Crusader? Because I think the Crusader just gets stonewalled by a bunch of tokens again. We can't just kill two spirits like we did last time. I want this Thalia to die so I can play this sword and hopefully they don't K command it. Cause then we can put it on Crusader and start beating face. They only have these two spirits to chump block with. We just need them to not have Colgon's command, because then we probably lose. Kill the prelate and the sword or something. Four tokens is a good trade with your sword coming online and the folly attack. I kind of want the sword on the Crusader is the thing, because they have just so many more... I guess they don't have that many chump blocking options because I can put on the Wisp. 
this Crusader is also like not going to die anytime soon. I don't need it. I don't need to like throw it in the abyss quite yet. All right, that was an excellent draw. Um, the wisdom. Yeah, I could. I could, like. I equip the wisdom and just attack, and they still have to block it. But this way, I can equip the the sword of the Crusader here. Attack with both. Kill the Wisp, and then maybe I just attack with the... Mm, it's actually tough. Do I just attack with Crusader here, or do I attack with Crusader plus Wisp? Put on Wisp. I, I want to... Uh, oh, opponent just concedes. Alright, cool. We, we did it. I was considering attacking with both here, just to make it so that my opponent had to... Wanted to block this Wisp with the Spirit. You put on Wisp, so you can attack with both. No, because if I put on Wisp, attack with both, they just block, 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 block with elementals. If I put it on Crusader and attack with both, then the only cards they can block with are these spirits, because Mirror Crusader is pro their entire board except spirit tokens, and Flickerus is flying. So they need to chub block this or they lose the game, pretty much. And they can either take three or kill off their only other blocker for this Mirror Crusader next turn, which is kind of the plan. Because we have this Flickerus to protect either Crusader or Sword from something in the future as well. And, I mean, it didn't matter. They conceded because they were going to die to Sword up Crusader. That match, that game definitely could have gone, uh, could have gone south, though. They just jump with one. Yeah, they can jump the, the Mirror Crusader with one token, but they were always going to do that, right? They were always going to have that option of chumping my Sworded Creature with a, with a token. And they can either take three from the Wisp or kill off their other Spirit. And that's just like a free three damage, right? Or if they put the other spirit on another bus, then now our spirit is online to punch them in the face for a million damage next turn. Whereas if we just equip the Wisp, and we attack with just the Wisp, it just gets chumped, the other spirit remains there. Or if we attack with the Wisp and the Crusader, the Crusader gets stonewalled by like 800 elementals. That was my process, at least. What's up, Yaz? Good to see ya. Thanks for the, the good luck. So this matchup, I imagine we want... Cataclysms. I, if they're the, the a similar deck than the one I'm thinking of, Cataclysms seems fine. Also, it seems okay against a controlling deck with Young Pyromancer and stuff. Blow up a lot of stuff, blow up their lands, blow up a bunch of Lingering Souls. Council's Judgment? I don't know. I imagine they have Planeswalkers in their deck. We didn't see any. But Council's Judgment is really clunky if like, their only good card to Council's Judgment is Young Pyromancer. Oh, they have Bedlam Reveler. Oh, this list does have Bedlam Revelers in it. Okay, so I imagine it's a list close to the one I'm looking at here. And pull it on screen if if any of you guys are not familiar with like the 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 Mardu Pyro of Legacy, or at least the one that I'm familiar with. I see it oh, I need to actually sideboard so I can't show you guys quite yet. <laughs> um Do I want rest of, hang on, 30 seconds. Uh rest in peace is probably fine. Cut uh swords of pleasure, swords of pleasures. Uh, Sarah Avenger, Revoker, Revoker, Revoker. Yeah, it's fine. Um, haven't got a good look at Brightling, but yeah, the Brightling card is sweet. I got my, I got two foils. I'm so excited to play them in paper as soon as as soon as I can. His hand kind of his hand kind of blows two cards a bit. When do you think you'll try it first? I think I'm gonna try two. The, I'm gonna be playing the list I'm playing right now. I'm gonna take out. I think. Two Crusaders, one Frexner Evoker, and put in a 24th land, another Plains, and then two Brightlings is how I'm going to try it out to start. I'm going to keep in one Crusader for, like, tutoring purposes. I kind of want to leave in the one Avenger. It might get cut. I don't know. But people have been going down to two Revokers, so I might try to follow suit, see how that goes. Seems, like, good enough, but I'm not happy about it. I mean, we have an extra Crocus. We can discard it to uh, K Command or something. It's like way more than 11 planes. I think it's like 14 at that point, or 13. Plane, yeah. Um, Because it's like 11 lands, right? Four ways, four port, three Caracas. So then it's 13 planes. That makes 24? Yeah. Right now I'm playing 11, I think. 11 in a cavern. 12 plus 11. Missing two from Franklin for DNT. Yeah, I, I was like, alright, I'm just gonna pick these up. These seem really sweet. <laughs> Also, the foils just look really good. I'm playing one cavern right now. I think with Brightling, you don't want to be playing cavern anymore because it's a white, white card that is a shapeshifter, I believe, and also is uh, needs white a lot of white mana for its activated abilities. I do kind of want shell eyes and foil, which, but I never bothered to snap that one up. I wasn't as sold on that in Legacy Desert Taxes. 
as I was with Brightling. I do like it. I'd like it a lot in Modern, though, so eventually I'll probably pick those up. Yeah, so I think Cavern loses a lot of equity when you're playing Brightling, because the card is very mana-hungry and very white mana symbol-hungry. And also, Cavern's, like, never even that good right now. Sure, versus Strix. Yeah, Strix is a little bit dangerous still. Maybe you just have to leave, like, Dreadful Ruin. Interesting. Maybe you have to leave in, mob, or leave in more plows against Pile or something? I'm not sure. Definitely gonna try it out, at least. The card seems like it has a lot of potential. Alright. No twos is awkward. We just give, if my opponent is a Planeswalker, we basically just lose here. They have Profit Loss in their deck. Can they not? Can they not afford to play like Marsh Casualties? Is their mana base not that good? Because I don't think this card is more worth it. The Young Pyro. I mean, we don't have anything for that. <laughs> XJ sure. Thanks. I could recruit. I already have a Wisp. I could recruit. Probably they discarded souls. Did they miss a land drop? They did. <laughs> you just drop the shark? How could you? Hang on, I need to figure out what the heck I'm doing here. Um, I'm recruiting for something. I already have the wisp. I could recruit another recruiter. F6. Um, recruiting Thalia is not bad with these Caracas. I'm just going to flashback Souls next turn, so maybe I just want to grab a Crusader. Crusader seems decent against their deck. I haven't seen any actual like Lightning Bolts or even Punishing Fire yet. We'll just grab Crusader, see what happens. Crusader is also going to be really good with Sword if we get there. Looting, okay. Trying to hit the line drop, I assume, so they get like looting souls. Discard grudge plus souls. Play a death rate. So this uh this sort of fire ice is a little bit dangerous. So they might flashback souls next turn. If they don't, we, if we can play Crusader if we want to get greedy. They have one land for this death rate, and if they if they don't cast souls, and they use the death rate, then we can just play fifth land and equip bash them with the Crusader. I think the flicker was was fine though. The flicker was does something similar if they don't cast lingering souls this turn. Because I can just play equipped into the Flicker West and kill their young Pyro. We're just going to gather a bunch of value here. Just Wisp Wisps while I can while they're having mana drop. <laughs> Shark Wahlberg. Is it just going to like slowly extend and extend? Extend. Attack. Deal. I will take one damage upon it. You can flashback Soul Sleep of a Grudge? Ooh. They might be playing a Lily the Last Hope. In which case, I will not be very happy. No, it's the Souls. So interestingly, that was their... That was their last green source. They are missing green. So I could play Equip Sword of Fire and Ice here and hit them. <laughs> Ruffle Shark. XJ Cloud Rope. How many sharks are there in Magic? Didn't we, we talked about this, right? We looked up all the sharks in Magic before. Um, I could actually Prelate on 2 to turn off the Ancient Grudge if I needed to. I could just keep flickering this Recruiter. They have 4 cards in hand. I think there was a point where we started like just looking up all the sharks that were in Magic. I 
could actually just start importing them, right? That's probably not a bad idea. I'll see what I'll, I'll wait a turn, see what they do, and just develop this mirror crusader for now. They have like a bolt. They do have a bolt. Interesting. Uh, we'll port the. Hmm, black. I don't think it matters too much. Yeah, if they find another land, then they can cast a looting or fetch, cast red boar or whatever. That's, I don't know they're going to flashback souls. That's not that aggressive. Start cataclysm, that'd be nice. Just going to fetch it, yeah. Black source, flashback souls here. And have this death right up. Too bad I can't, like, tutor for an Orzhov Pontiff here. They have three cards left in hand. What is my plan? Oh, do they have another removal spell? And they're gonna burn it on this recruiter? Deal. I think we're still like pretty dead here, but the yeah, opponent just has like so much power in play. We are very likely just dead. for like nine here. Some absurd amount. We need to draw a Cataclysm. Maybe I should block one in case we drew exactly Cataclysm. Yeah, I think we are just dead. That did not work out. They had mana troubles, but they had an unanswered, unanswered young Pyro. Maybe we're supposed to leave more plows. Did have a kind of a rush job of a sideboarding plan. I had to see more of their, uh... Does this deck have a dreadboard of curiosity? It does not. It, has, it doesn't have profit loss, it just has the March casualties, which I expected. Profit loss is an instant say. Thanks, Moto. Is profit loss an instant or a sorcery? <laughs> Let me see this card. Eh, I hate you, Moto. MTG Profit Loss. It is an instant. Cool. Thank you, Moto. Oh, crap. What am I doing? Burning through my clock right now? Yeah, I'm dead. I should have conceded and then done that. Sea Gear Wreckage is the 24th land. I don't, I've never been a huge fan of Sea Gear Wreckage in Modern or Legacy is the issue. Like, your color sources are, like, are so taxed in a lot of matchups. In terms of Rashad and Port and Wasteland are always cards you want to be activating. If you don't, if you're, like, just sitting around there with your mana and you don't have anything to do, it's like, oh, that's what Rashad and Port and Wasteland are for. Give me one second, we're gonna... Maybe I do want Avenger to punch through souls... I actually, I only boarded out two plows. Maybe we want to keep an all of our plows, though. Cut. Um, GT actually seems fine. Recipe seems very good. Maybe Council... I, I, we still haven't seen a Planeswalker in all these matches, and we have ca Cataclysm to answer it if we need to. Go away, Photoshop. No one cares about you. So more plows lets us answer Young Pyro, which is kind of a big deal. Council Judgment lets us only answer Planeswalkers, which we're not even sure the opponent is playing in their deck. Probably turn them back like this. Anyhow, um, and the big the big draw of the 24th land is how big Blood Moon decks are right now. And you really just want to be maximizing... Oh, this hand's great. Maximizing the amount of basics that you play in order to like not just randomly die to Blood Moon hands. It's, it feels really bad when you keep your... 
your Caracas Wasteland Rashadon Port hand, and then your opponent goes uh, Soul Land Spirit Guide Blood Moon. You on turn one, you lose, even though you have like a very good matchup there. Let's just draw a rest in peace. Let's have them just discard two lingering souls and then we draw a rest in peace. Looting Reveler, sure. Eh, Slam Stalia. Kill us, push, bolt, some. Oh, that's fine. That's not a great draw. We're gonna put their red sources. I think they're more relevant right now than their black sources. Could have cast Wisp there, but basically just gets no value. I'd rather think. I think I'd rather have it on the vial. Cast souls here if they wanted. No, they can't. Follow you. Could like flicker with my own Thalia and then Cataclysm them, but it only kills two lands. So I can just keep waiting. So just because this death right makes it so that they can rebuild off their cataclysm pretty easily. I wonder what they're gonna fetch here. I guess that makes sense. So I can't cut them off of any other colors. Fatal push, alright. I'll save it. I think you weren't in touch with how much is going on in my minutes just local. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely just an issue. Like, I wouldn't... What they... The K command me there? Yeah. Alright. Well, we're setting up to... Cat oh, man. Jig is up. Yeah, it's obviously, like, local metas are gonna be obviously very different. People are not going to play the best deck in Legacy a lot of the time if they just have a deck that they like a lot. Because it's so expensive to shift between decks. Oh man, are they gonna Cabal Therapy me? I don't know, it's red mana. It's weak. I think it's I think it's perfectly fine to be playing something like a Sea Wreckage or a Horizon Canopy or something as that 24th land to try and kind of mitigate. Uh try and kind of mitigate Flooding with a uh, with a higher land build. Punch. Nah, I probably should put the black source there. Maybe not. They can't cast souls. No, they can't because they have death. But they have death rate, so it doesn't really matter what I put it. Which I'm not convinced. Um, we're playing third recruiter first. A red for basically P and K and some demise <laughs> sword mage. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like Magus recently, and, like, Magus was sweet sometimes. Okay. We're getting somewhere. Unless they have another K-Command, we're getting somewhere. But, what am I trying to say? Sorry, I'm distracted also trying to play this game. There was a point where I, I enjoyed the the white-red the white -red builds with Magus, but I don't think Magus is great specifically in taxes right now. I think Blood Moons are good if you're playing them on turn one, not if you're playing them on turn three. That's mean, opponent. Thought it's easy in a K command, please no. That would be... Okay, that's fine. I can beat that. I'm 
torn between just hooking this. I think I'm supposed to just hook up and punch in, right? But only has one card in hand. They do have two lootings I can start flashing back. They have push as the last card in their hand? Please no. Worse yet, like a broke to get a sword or ancient grudge it. Oh god. Ancient grudge your sword with the last card in my hand. Double them, double block your stone forge with two spirits. Ugh. Man. Not my day. And now they have Ancient Grudge flashback ready for the the other side of Batter Skull. I need like eight mana to protect it. Jesus. That's so bad. Anyway, back to the thing about Breitling. Uh, about Breitling. I got thinking of pl just playing Third Recruiter first, or Red for P and K. Oh, okay, for like the extra grindy element. Oh, jeez. And then they... Wow, they just drew the souls too, they didn't even flash back into it? Come on, come in. That's, that's not very nice. Seven mana? Almost to the point where I can... Batter Skull. Through the ancient grudge. Still can't even port them down through the lingering souls because of this shaman. And we'll probably just never hit eighth land. If we do, we're somehow to work back into this game, I think. The issue is if. We do. We take another three here. Land? Oh, wow, we actually hit the last land. I think PK was good in them. Yeah. PK was always like one of my favorite reasons to be playing the red splash. P and K with Caracas and like Violin Four and stuff is just so good. All right, I swear to God, if they have last, if they have K command, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Just thought sees me. I take five here, sure. Looting into the Thought Seas is when they're death ray. Flicker Wisp. Interesting. Am I supposed to play Wisp just to mitigate damage? They have two cards in hand. So if they have another artifact removal, if they have like an Ancient Grudge, I can't afford to just leave up three mana again. I will just die to these tokens. By playing Batter Skull plus a Wisp, I think I mitigate a removal spell on the Batter Skull, like a Fatal Push or something, because I can move it over to the Wisp and punch them for a bunch of damage. And I get to kill a token in the process, so I think that's probably the line. So I'm dead very quickly if they just have an answer for this Batter Skull for another turn. So I just need to hope that somehow they haven't found anything. If they have K Command, obviously, it's just the stone worst. Shatter your Barrow's Cold, kill your Flicker Wisp, but I wasn't going to beat a K Command here anyway. Interesting attack. I'll take it. Bolt, bolt my face. Bolt my face. Activate death rate. Why didn't they? They should have attacked with the last spirit then, right? Because what if I actually blocked with the wisp? Hmm. Bummer. Wasn't playing around double bolt. Although. Again, not beating Double Bolt 
anyway. They attack with those tokens, I block one. Then I go to my turn, attack with Power Skull, they double bolt it, and then I just like lose the game. Yeah. Are we back to being horrendously unlucky? Let me find the data. What do I even call that deck? It's like basically Mardu Pyro and Legacy. I suppose it's just Mardu Pyro. Jesus, are we only on Master? Yeah, we've played Miracles into like super grindy Mardu Pyromancer. And it's like 1040. I hate my life. Some days you're just not destined. You're maybe we might if we if we hit X3, we might call it at like four matches tonight. <laughs> at the at the pace these are going. I know I always like to play through the whole league. Maybe I'll just leave it at four matches and just play through the last match for experience like at some other point. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll just play against Red Black Rainmare three times, and the last three matches will go by like a breeze. But knowing my luck, we'll probably play against like Check Pile this round, and then a three drop. I don't even. I've never actually played more Mirror Vig. Elf City. Yeah, we're just gonna play against Check Pile Elves. And then when we're 0-4, we're just going to get, like, belched for the last round. <laughs> Never played more Mirror Vig. You have to, like, buy an avatar or something, right? <laughs> be sweet. I'm sorry all the time. I don't think your angel is playable in non-standard formats, regardless of how sweet it is. Alright, please. Please be on, I don't know. I want them to be on something fast, but I also don't want them to be on something too fast, because then we just we just die. Like burn maybe. It has a lot of text. It's like a very like marquee mythic card. I have nothing against it. <laughs> Playing against Grixis Rob. I would imagine that they are on Grixis, but I've been wrong before. <sighs> Sometimes Grixis is the worst card in your deck. This hand's probably still keepable, honestly. Double by a mom. Eh. Or O2. How much worse could this go? Maybe they'll be on Black Red Reanimator. I don't know if it looks like they're actually on Grixis. So I don't know if it's Czech or Delver. Krogus either I'll go. Oop, never mind. Planes either battle go. I almost want to play the Crocs out just to beat them into Wastelanding, but I can kind of do that at any point. If they daze this, I truly could not care less. We have another Vile and a Mom and Thalia. Bunch of stuff. Three jump that pumps flies makes angel. Yeah, that's the one. All the time was very excited about it, and I was less than enthusiastic about the card. Because I'm not a big standard person. I think I just file mom, maybe? We'll see. I'll do it with the ponder. Did not shuffle. Delver. Path. Oh no, they replayed their land off the days. They're not just missing a land drop. I'm sure we can all poop on the new we can all poop on the new Johnny. Yeah, the new Johnny actually looks decent. I mean it's like I think it's mostly worse Gideon. But it looks pretty cool. Like minus minus get your Thalia back or whatever. I think it's just primarily just bad Gideon or bad Elspeth. But it's like neat. Oh, so we play Hang on, now now we're talking. We play Resplendent Angel and Brightling in the same deck. So we make Brightling a 5-1 with Lifelink to combo with Resplendent Angel. Um, I think I'd rather have my second file days than my mom. My opponent says hi, good luck, have fun, like three minutes into my match. Odd. 
I will see you too. Gotta be polite. Unless your opponent's a huge... Force pitching day is interesting. Yeah, plays vile. Is this the third days? Please actually be the third days. I'd be happy about that. I just... <laughs> they have the third days. Cool. Opponent is going all in on not letting me resolve any spells. But now they have, like, two cards in. One of them is an underground C. This Dolly is probably going to do work. Unfortunately, if I want to play this Caracas, I have to give them a land in the yard. Minus get your Dark Compound back. Yeah, exactly. There's so much value. Minus get your Stoneforge back? Huh? Think about it. Dawn of the Third Days. <laughs> they can't possibly have the Fourth Days. What is that? Oh, there's a gem. <laughs> well, I was wrong. My opponent sure showed me what's up. But now, I think we can still race this, right? We got a 15. Next turn, we got a 12. They're going to attack me to 12. I play Stoneforge. They drain me to 10. They attack me to 7. I can put in Batter Skull. They drain me to 5. No, then they type me. Then I'm, I think I'm exactly dead. Unless I can like draw an answer for an insectolod version or something, or find something faster than just batter skull. Maybe GTA if I find another land. My opponent genuinely did just have four dazes. Wait, did they not activate the death rate with their floating black mana? All right, that makes the math much better for me. I also like recruit a wisp, maybe. Opponent has two cards in hand and no access to red mana, though. So I think I can just try to get this. This, uh, Batter Skull online. Unless the last two cards in hand are Force and Blue card. Hey, we did it. We resolved a creature. Took us till turn four to resolve a spell, but we made it. It might be GTA, honestly. It's close. I don't. I know maybe it's not GTA because I can't play the fourth light without giving them red mana. And if I give them red mana, my stone forge is probably not gonna live. I think we just get grab batter clone hope. Maybe they'll forget to drain me again. That made the math a lot better for me here. Yeah, they're just not draining me with this death rate. Oh man, they do have the Volk. But they also use it to ponder. So now my Stoneforge is immune to Bolt. Since they played their land, they can't activate their Death Ray Shaman. Alright, unless they have Fatal Push or something. I guess Cabal Therapy would be bad. Cabal Therapy here would be a bummer. This is, Cabal, this is an angler. Yeah, Cabal Therapy would be, would be cast a lot faster. We have Crusader to beat up an angler, but we do have to be wary of this. We need to draw, like, Wasteland or something. They only have one card in hand. What do they do with the Ponder? Did not shuffle. Hmm, what are we going to do here? Wasteland's interesting. Although, Wasteland doesn't help me because it just gives them red mana off this death rate. Does let me hit more my land drops at least. I think we're just gonna play Crusader and hope my opponent doesn't have Bolt left, left in the tank. Crusader can help Stonewall, Gurmog. If they don't have Bolt. And then we can actually get towards, like, Crusader with a Batter Skull on it, and then the game's just over. Oh man, they do have Bolt. I 
They should just batter skull. I guess I could have just put in maybe put in batter skull. Because if they attack with the angler, then we're still fine because we could attack them back for four. Now we're just going to three. Now we're just actually dead. Yeah, no, that was dumb. Playing the Crusader was kind of a pipe dream. If I had had batter skull here, I think I'd be in a lot better position. It was just chump block. It's probably a lot smarter, so I don't just die. Next turn, I can play Caracas to play Batter Skull, or hopefully draw another land to play Batter Skull. Then we can set up Recruiter into Wisp the Batter Skull. Definitely not out of this game, but I think the Batter Skull is a lot better than the Crusader this turn. Playing a little fast and loose here. Another Stone Forge doesn't help me. Um, so, if my opponent actually activates this death right for, like, once in their life, then I go to six here. So I can't realistically Stoneforge. I just need to play this Batter Skull. We're dead to Bolt here. They drain me to six, attack me, Bolt me. We're dead to... No, we're not dead to this. This actually buys us a little bit of time. Recruiter Flicker with. If we draw a land, we can recruit Flickers plus play Stoneforge, which would be excellent. So we're effectively at five here. Actually, no, that's bad, right? Yeah, we're just dead now. They have lethal in play. Now we're not dead, right? Um, so hypothetically, we're going to five here. I have to plow the. I have to plow the Aberration. They drain me to five. Then I have to play Recruiter. But then I have to jump like the Angler. And then we're dead to these Shamans. Although I guess we're not. They only have one. There's only one card in the grave, right? For this death rate. So they drain me to five here. And then if I just play Recruiter for Flicker with Block for this, I take exactly five and die still. Although I could also just plow the block this, plow the death rate, or plow the aberration. What if I play Stoneforge? Stoneforge, they drain me to five. Then I block uh, the death rate, plow the Gurmog, go to one. If I draw a land, I can actually come back. I think that's actually my best play. If a deck is called Xerox, what does it mean? It's um, the idea that a lot of the cards in the deck are the same, basically. They serve very similar functions. Like the Xerox decks in Legacy, or uh, by an extension, Vintage, are the decks that play like a bunch of cantrips, because they all just kind of try to find you the same core cards. Your Ponders and your Brainstorms in Legacy are just very similar cards, and you just kind of power through your deck. The, the idea behind it is, like, the, the less cards in your deck, the more powerful it is, essentially, right? If you're always drawing the best cards in your deck every game consistently, then you're more likely to be well off. Rather than having, like, 60 card decks where sometimes you draw the, the wrong pieces. Yeah, the Dream to 5 here. What did they draw? Brainstorm? Sure. Oh no, now we're dead, right? We're dead to an instant of sorcery. Because now they can drain me for three. Drain me for two here. Let's see how they handle it. I've just seen that term thrown around to describe my vintage lately. Yeah, there's an article. The it everyone started using it as soon as like one guy wrote about it in an article. Let me see if I can find it. I 
forget. Let me. I'll try to find it in a second. We also have a notification. All this stuff going on at the same time. Uh, twenty-five twenty-six has followed. Thank you for the support. Twenty-five twenty-six. Anyhow, yeah. Um, I'll try to find that article at some point. But apparently, th this one person basically wrote this big article on Vintage about how. Uh, so we're just dead here, right? I can block the Gurmog, plow the Delver, go to three here. I guess we're not dead. We could draw Flicker Wisp here and be fine, or be okay. Because I don't want to put me to three here. Then I have enough instant. I guess there are two instant sorcerers now, actually. Now there are three. Okay, now we're just dead to anything. We're just dead. Regardless, because they have three cards for the death rates now, and I'm at five life. We are just dead. I think I could have won that game if I had put in the, played the Batter School instead of the Mirror Crusader on that turn. I think we would have had a much better shot at winning. I was not thinking very clearly about it. Anyhow. Let's do a little bit of sideboarding and then talk about Turbo Zero. So if, who is the person that coined this phrase? Because now, like... As soon as this one, no one had ever said the term, it, Turbo Xerox is a lot of what people call it, not just Xerox, but one person wrote about it. And then suddenly everyone was using the name. Turbo Xerox was the theory introduced by Alan Corner, remains the most powerful approach to building magic decks today. Um, the construction of a mana base with a suite of cantrips. Yeah, a traditional X might be 36 spells and 24 lands. A deck built around the principles of Turbo Zerox might have 20 land, 28 regular little cost spells, and 12 cantrips. Yeah, so eventually, essentially you just use cantrips to be able to power through your deck a lot more and minimize, like, the variance because you're seeing the exact same cards. Your games turn out to be very similar to each other because you're always trying to, like, draw to the same core cards. You basically just make your deck size smaller by playing a bunch of cantrips. That's that's basically the idea. Would like to play first. Uh, yeah, this hand is almost. It's like a deck that has cards that sort of do the same thing and play a bunch. Yeah, exactly. Like Delver is a pretty, pretty good example of a Turbo Xerox deck where you play like twelve cards that can actually kill your opponent, but you also play a pile of cantrips to just always find those cards. Always find the removal spells to, like, clear the way for your cards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this hand sucks. This hand is much better. I, I really dig this hand. We have... Uh, I don't want that. We have Vial into Plow or Port or Stoneforge. Yeah, Death Shadow. Kirk's Death Shadow is a pretty good example of Turbo Xerox in modern. Because it's a, it's a lot harder to produce that kind of deck in modern. Just based on the, the, the card quality of your cantrips. They're just so much worse. But Death Shadow kind of put them to work, especially stuff like Thought Scarrow with their Delve Threats. They just play very minimal lands, so you don't... You, you flood out less. You have a bunch of cantrips, so you don't like, get mana screwed as much, because you can always try to use these cantrips to find your more other land drops. We're just gonna port my opponent. Ooh, never mind. We're gonna play Thalia. Thalia is like a port, except it ports every time they cast a non-creature spell. That was like when Infinity wasn't standard, and it was just what everyone's playing. Zero. No, that's, that's, that's different. I don't know if there's like a word for that, besides just like net decking the best deck. There's a whole article this person wrote about. Oh, this is person is trying to fix the Turbo Xerox problem in Vintage on their article. 
the Atog Lord. Isn't that like an actual like one of the pros is the Atog Lord on various social media outlets? Um, I guess I want to play one of these. I think the term for a deck that everyone <laughs> that was just the Pacific. The that was mostly a uh, a term coined for Crixus Delver, right? Yeah, Tog Lord is Rich Shea, that was it. So yeah, Rich Shea apparently wrote this was about a year ago, July twenty fifth, twenty seventeen. Wrote this uh article about Turbo Xerox and how you would fight it. But yeah. Taxes, taxes are a good way to fight Turbo Xerox decks, and that's why the, a lot of the big vintage meta is Shops v. Cantrip decks. Um, maybe I don't even want to plow these. I just get to port them, Valen Stoneforge. Next turn I could activate Stoneforge plus plow, or activate Stoneforge plus port. Eh, I'll take some, take some knocks. Or port the... I will let these things flip. Rich Shea lives near. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't know any pros that live near me. Delvers didn't even flip. Easy. Oh no, Caleb sure lives in St. Louis, I think. I never play him on text so much shit what I do. This is fine. Let's let's just play our source black shows as well. I've played against I think like two pros in my life. Play against Huey Jensen at GP Chicago in like 2013 or 2014 and got absolutely bodied. Like, not close, just <laughs> fucking buried. My opponent can't cast Angler here. What are they doing? Ther I guess they could be casting a cantrip. Therapy's not good here. I have therapy's okay because I have the Stone Forge. Third time, Jesus. He was yeah, he was he was really he was really intimidating. Like people will talk about he's apparently like really nice when they play him. He didn't say like a word to me. It was horrifying. <laughs> it is like the, the guy's massive too. He's just like looming over me. It was it was a terrifying experience. This attack feels wrong. Like, they know I have the Stoneforge Mystic in my hand, and they're tapped out. I grab Batter School or Sword here. Actually, I'll just grab Gita. Just kill all of his Delvers. That attack seemed a little poor. Play Caleb Schur and crush him. Yeah, I mean, if you know Caleb Schur is on Storm, like, obviously he's always going to be on Storm. Alright, so the other thing we get super by, by here is a true name nemesis. So you pick against Bed Freeman. And yeah, I've played against a couple, like, lesser known pros. Pat Cox, I think. I think he works at CFB. But he's never, he's usually not like the, the names that everyone recognizes immediately when you say pro. Kill your Delvers. Into a lifetime for I'm like O and X against any pro I've ever played. Even like minor pro. I used to live in the same, uh, I used to live in the same town as Jeff, Jeff Hoogland. It was like, pretty like, part-time to low-time pro. At this episode of this stage, but I'm like X and three or X and four against him. I just can never beat a pro to save my life, and I have no idea why. <laughs> Did not shuffle. All right, we just need to dodge like land true name. We should be fine here. <laughs> yes, exactly. The guy who invented Big Red. That, that whole debacle. Therapy is kind of rude, but we also just murdered my opponent's three Delver secrets, so I'm not. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't invent Big Red, unless you're going along with the joke. I'm not sure, Romario. <laughs> I 
I don't want to spread false. Ooh. Man, now I like don't want to attack with this stone forge into this bolt. I feel like my opponent would have bolted though. All right, yeah, we're not attacking here. We can port plus activate stone forge. I'm sure I play. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is this is this you like a million years ago playing big red? I hope it is. 2014. Yeah. If I recall correctly, there was some um. There was some issue about people saying that he claimed he like was like the progenitor of Big Red or something. Yeah, opponent Bolt, which is what I figured. Which is why we didn't attack because we had to put in this batter school. Thing that bothers me is he doesn't. Yeah, I don't. Know. Mm. I try not to try not to say too much that can that is incriminating again via being recorded online. Although it's not like he's ever gonna see this stuff. He's gonna disappear from this batter school. It looked like. Uh, yeah, it's it's fine. I get you. I I understand. I would, I'd be lying if I said that like the internet definitely thinks of Jeff Hoogland not the not the not the best light. So it's not like you're bringing any news to the table there. All right, we've drawn all of our equipment. So now we'll just draw a creature and we'll be fine in the next four turns. Yeah, I appreciate he he puts out a lot of like interesting content. It's just like takes a certain type of person to want to Ailful strikes. My opponent's Delver. I don't know. I don't know what's happening today. Today's a weird day. It takes a certain type of person to to watch that content. I don't know what Baleful Strikes is doing in my opponent's Delver deck. It's like the oh, Alright, if we just draw a Mirror Crusader or basically any creature at all. We're just fine here, right? Just not a land or another vial, please. Uh, so we're just taking 11 here. Yeah, we just need to cast this and hope. We might actually still die because we can't get this GTA online. Because they attack for 10 here, put me to 4. And we can't lethal them. I also think Todd Stevens is a robot. <laughs> yeah, I think we might actually die here because we can't wait for my opponent because they're at 8. And we can only hit them for 7 here. If we draw like Flicker Wisp, we might stay alive. But I have another math. So we can equip GTA plus sword here. Kill the kill the death right. Um and then we'll be able to have two counters on the GTA so we can block this. Because hmm. my god, we have five five. I can block gain two isn't quite enough. I actually did to play Tabernacle. Jeez. <laughs> Brutal. Alright, hang on. I need to go into the tank about if I can live this turn. I don't think I can. Without... I can, I guess I like have to kill off this Avenger, right? I can equip, equip. Attack for five. Shoot off this death right. I have two counters on the GTA and a 5-5 five, five Avenger. They attack. I'm at three. I have to block here and gain up to... Seven life, and then I go down to one. So then I'm just basically dead, unless I draw Flicker Wisp for the Batter Skull. Hmm. 
I guess I also get a draw card. The card might be a two drop, or a three drop for this vial. So, I mean, some chance is better than no chance. Kill the death rate. Get counters on the GT. Druthalia, that does not help because it's not a three drop. Brainstorm, sure. Yeah, we're going to have to trade with an angler and go to one here and then top deck a flicker whisk for this batter skull, I think. <laughs> And that's if they don't draw. I guess they can't really draw removal for this adventure at this point. They draw like Ancient Grudge or something. Deck with everything, right? Yep. Don't attack with the Strix. Interesting. Oh, they, okay, they do attack with the Strix. So we have to block here. We actually get two counter, two, two more charge counters in the GTA, so this is actually not the worst position in the world. Unless they have bolt in their hand, in which case we lose, but whatever. Alright, we get counters in the GTA again. Do they have the bolt? Sorry, I'm not very focused. Oh god, that's bad for me. I'm not very focused on chat right now. I think I might lose to this death rate. I'm trying very hard not to lose, even though I think we are pretty de Ooh, ho, 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 what is this? Suddenly a chance. So my opponent's brainstorm locked, so do I have a better out of... Kill death rate, violent wisp on batter skull, equip it with... The GT. I also play the Thalia as well, actually, instead. Or I could actually equip plus play the Thalia. So I definitely need to kill his death ray because I'm at one life. I could also gain, go up to five life instead. That makes me not lose to. Uh, a top deck removal spell for the Flicker Wisp. God, hang on. Now, if they had a removal spell, it'd be a bolt, and they would have just bolted me in the face. So their top card is not. Yeah, I think equip with Sophie to block the bit. Oh, yeah, that also prevents. I mean, the bolt's going to kill me anyway, so. So we just died to like bolt if they for some reason didn't use the last turn. Sure, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I got you. The, yeah, the equip there makes the equip with the sword makes sense because the available tricks is blue. I think we just win though, unless they for some reason had bolt and they didn't use it last turn. Yeah, strikes into the other brainstormed card, which is not bolt. Is it dismember for lethal? No, they can't dismember. Dismember costs two mana. Oh, just probe. Okay, yeah, they're dead. The opponent did show they have dismember in their deck, so that actually gave them another out, right? No, they're at three life. They couldn't dismember. I, was, I don't know. I was panicking because I didn't think we were going to win that game. I was, like, very, very in on chat, thinking that we were basically dead, but... Yeah, I thought I can jump block where the batter skull can jump block. Hmm. Opponent says close one in chat. I agree. Maybe it was actually no. If they, I couldn't flicker out the 
the red source anyway to beat Bolt because they just comes back on and they bolt my face. Nice. Um, maybe just run it back. That was that was a little bit more nerve wracking than I would have liked. All right, this hand's fine, not great, good enough. I'll plow a death right on turn one. Otherwise, I think I'm playing. I think I'm playing mom. Might be inclined to plow a delver. Definitely planning death ray. Yep. I'll kill that. Or at least try to. Don't daze me. This feels like it. This feels like a daze. Although I feel like if they just snap off the daze, they might be thinking about like force. Or just putting the fear of God in me. Young Peasy. Yep. I just slam Thalia. It probably dies. Stoneforge is interesting. Next turn we get like Stoneforge plus Mom. Or GTA plus Mom. Probably Stoneforge plus Mom. So they were thinking about the days, they decided to save it for the Pyro instead. Interesting. Definitely have to run my spells into days here. Opponent just like cantrip into cantrip, we're pretty far behind. Delver's fine. If we can get this GTA online, we can win this. So what do I Stoneforge for? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Spend way too much on Japanese foreign black border bolts. They sound hot, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're so sick. Um, I guess we'll grab batter skull for now. We'll grab yeah, batter skull for now. We have sword if we really want to like play and equip a thing next turn to punch them. Batter skull sets it up so that we hit land five. We can actually just yeah, I can't play that. What am I doing? Got another days. Right. Don't flip. Don't flip. Don't do it. No flips. All right, my mana base is pretty good against wasteland. You need to be careful about trying to like play equip this GTA, but they have to fire off the removal spell now, right? Because they know I have Batter Skull in hand. It's probably pretty hard for them to beat right now. Wow, they just have nothing? I'm not even sure if I want to expose this port to this wasteland here. I can leave up the opening for me to, uh, put in GTA and equip it in the same turn still. So I can just play Aether Val Pass. They, wait, they let me get this Mother Runes online too. Am I getting like baited? I could play equip GTA to the Stone Forge punch them. I think we'll just put a Batter Skull though, yeah. Fine, just kind of sitting. If I get Batter Skull in play, it's very hard for my opponent to answer without them finding their, their artifact removal, which I guess is what they're sitting on here. Sitting on like a uh, an ancient grudge or in a braid, but what they wouldn't pass with that mana. So they flip off a bolt. That's fine. Play another wasteland. That's fine. So if they braid this batter skull, then we get to connect with GTA and like kill their stuff. They have a Vendelian click they've been sitting on this whole time. That's what they're waiting for? Sure. I have two equipment. And I would be fine with putting either of them into play here. They might actually need to take the GTA here, considering how devastating it is to them right now. 
But then I get a Batter Skull, which they also can't beat very easily. And I have this other Stone Forge to just go find the equipment again. This did not work out very well for my opponent. Wow, they take the Batter Skull. That means I just get to connect with this GTA. this plow, sure. So I just get to kill like their entire board here. Did you get to ping that, ping that, plow their insect elaboration. Easy game, easy life. One of the last two cards in their hand is Bolt. They have Dismember? Dismember doesn't help. So it's not paying costs briefly. I don't know what their plan was. They might block. They might block. If the last card in their hand. They do have a Dismember. They used it game one, if I recall correctly. Maybe they block to try and bait me to use this mom. I'm fine trading here. I feel pretty good here, unless they draw, like, ex even if they draw True Name, we're still pretty good. We have Stoneforge for Sword of Fire and Ice. Alright, yeah, I'll take the one opponent, you got me. I'm not gonna block your elemental when you have a bolt in your hand. Let's play Thalia, pass. No, my opponent doesn't know I have the Thalia. So should I play Stoneforge? Is it even? Nah, it's probably not worth the mind games. I'd rather just let them stew on what I'm going to get with the Stoneforge. We'll just play Thalia, pass. I think this game is like, pretty locked up regardless. Yeah, this is fine. They want to two-for-one themselves to kill this Stoneforge. Or to kill this mom. They bolt in and they like dismember it for two life. Why would they bolt there? Unless they have like, as they have second bolt, not dismember. They needed the red mana to untap. Yeah, sure. You got it, boss. Alright, let's go get sword in case of true name. Like, that's like the only way we lose here. Sword. Check with that. If they have a removal spell for this Thalia, we have this Flicker Wisp. I think they're just dead. Can't imagine that they're winning this game. Also, why are all of my games going to like 8 million years before they end? My Grix is Delver match. It's like, oh, 5 minutes on my opponent's clock, 7 minutes on mine. It's 11.20, I have 2 matches left.
That also makes me wonder if I'm getting ghosted when this happens. Some people just do do play kind of slowly. Also, I haven't looked at the viewer count recently, but I don't think I've ever been ghosted. Just not not big enough on the scene, which is nice. Ooh, all right, yeah, this is. Are you a streamer? I suppose. Not even worth equipping to. G I'm just <laughs> probably moving over, but I don't know. I'm tired. Opponent's dead. Doesn't matter. If, yeah, ghosting doesn't matter if they can't win. But again, I'm, yeah, my boss not ghosting. I have like, tw oh wow, we actually have twelve viewers. This is a lot more than average. But yes, I don't imagine my opponent is ghosting me. I don't even know if I need to put this prelate on anything. I believe this flicker wisp. Whatever, we're fine. Ghosting doesn't matter if they can't win. Exactly. My opponent's known the contents of my hand for a while since this, uh... Or, I guess, like, the important parts of my hand from that Vendillion click a while back. But I'm gonna cast, like, fucking six mana... I can't even think of something like... Sure! Liliana the Last Hope resolves opponent. That's gonna get you out of this. Wow, they showed me what's what. They get to kill my Thalia with this play? Oh no. They don't worth is anything. Is this. You know what? Just die. Sorry, Thalia. But. Opponent is so horrendously dead. Strifo does seem like a familiar name. I've thought I've I've thought it on many occasions. At least I'm not the only one. Do you have a lightning bolt, opponent? Or does not have a lightning bolt. All right, opponent, just die, please. Thank God. All right, that Lily out of the last hope was not going to win my opponent that match. Why is it eleven thirty and we have finished three matches of Legacy? Can I even finish this league? 63 games against Grixis Delver. I am 39 and 24 in matches, or in games. 18 and out of 18 and 9 in matches. I'm exactly a 66, exactly two thirds win rate. 18 out of 27. I usually wake up at like 6. So, usually go to bed at like midnight, 6 hours of sleep. Sometimes go to bed at like 11.30 the stream goes short, but this is looking like it's going to be a, a long one. We might cut it at 4 rounds and just finish the league tomorrow. And then play like Eltrazi, or play like Thalia Stomp or something, something that's fast, so I can get him try to fit in the full league still. We'll see. Maybe we'll just play against a red black ram here twice and life will be great. Sleep is for quitters. Indeed. Sleep is for quitters. Who needs to sleep? My girlfriend probably starts getting mad though. When it's like midnight, because I'm I stream in the bedroom. So she doesn't really get to sleep. She usually like falls asleep on the couch if she's too tired. Sharks, yes, sharks. Sleep is also for sharks. Sharks sleep while still moving, right? They even when they're asleep, they have to like move forward or they die because they like have to push the water through their gills or something. That's a shark fact, I think. So I guess not a fact. It's a shark, maybe. Let's Google that. 
Maybe not that better deal while we're sitting here waiting for this next round to start. Do sharks move while sleeping? Shark species need to swim constantly to keep water moving over their gills. They seem to have actful, active periods and restful periods rather than undergoing deep sleep like, like we do. They seem to be sleep swimming with parts of their brain less active or resting while the shark remains swimming. Interesting. So there you go. There's your shark fact for the day. J Shark filled to the gills with approximate knowledge. <laughs> we, there's actually a poster in in our bathroom that has some shark facts on it. Sharks' teeth act like con like conveyor. Or sharks' mouths act like conveyor belts for their teeth. They break off so many that their gums are like constantly churning these new teeth forward. So when the one breaks off, it has like a new one that comes and replaces it. Shark mouths are horrifying. If you if you pet a shark one way, it's like totally smooth. But if you pet a shark the other way, it like shreds up your hand, or whatever you would touch it with, because shark shark skin is very rough. One going one way. <laughs> it is horrifying. I'm learning so much in this stream. I'm glad I I'm glad I could help everyone learn about sharks. The real, the real motivator for people to come to this chat. I need to I need to change my whole gimmick. We're no longer the death and taxes stream. We are the shark stream. That's that's the whole plan. We need to get a whole array of shark related emotes. We need my good friend here to just be in the background all the time. That's that's the new plan. I'm gonna have to like start looking up shark facts though. I don't know that many. We should get a shark facts command. That's genius. All right, we're gonna get. I'm gonna. We're gonna get that implemented the next couple days. People make. Wow, that's horrifying. <laughs> wow, that's that's real fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard of those. I've heard of like the. Uh, that sort of thing. I didn't think about shark skin specifically, but I do know, didn't know that that was like a thing. But ugh. oh, oh. What is this? It's like an emote. Weird. We'll get a shark fix. I could run a shark fact thing. Please do. <laughs> yeah, as if I mod you, will you make me a shark's fact? A shark facts command? It's so much work. I don't know how MTG bot works. It's complicated. You have to do like exclamation point, add com, whatever. Did you just hear sharks and you came running? Is that the plan? I can do. We're gonna implement a shark facts command in <gasps> chat so you can type exclamation point shark facts. Did you did you tell them we have a shark facts? Thing yeah, in our I told them room? I told them do I have Nightbot? Um uh, maybe? I don't know. I think I only have MTG bot. Hang on. Do I can I see the bots in this chat right now? Uh, I've I have MTG bot and Stream Decker bot. And that's it. We're the only mods. Uh Chilus a mod, but Chilus shows up pretty rarely. All right, we're back. We're back to practice of playing magic. Um, yeah, sounds like good enough. Why can't I just draw Aether Vial all the time? Never lucky. We should just get. We should have legacy commanders. My commander would be Aether Vial. Life would be great. Nightbot is real simple. I have Nightbot, so you can test on my stream. I think this person plays four color alone. So maybe. Not right now, at least, but. I mean, obviously, yeah. You didn't see the, the island ponder before you that happened, but 
I get you. I am probably just putting Nightbot in this chat. I don't know. Bots are, bots are weird. I don't mess with them more than I have to. It's hard work. Don't know what my opponent is playing. Island Ponder could mean a whole assortment of decks, so I think we're just going to Stoneforge for... Batter Skull? We have Gta. If, I, if there are Miracles, I'd rather have Sword, but I'm not... I don't hate having Batter Skull against Miracles here. Let's just throw out a stone for him. Yeah, I don't know. Is that a thing that happened to like, everybody, or is that just the thing that happened to like this chat? I haven't paid attention to what MTG Bot is doing. I just noticed that it stopped posting. Oh, you're in round one or whatever. Your record is this. Your opponent's record is this. And with Nightbot, I know. Basic. My opponent's gonna force it. Pitching brainstorm. All right, cool. So I don't even have to decide what to get with the Stone Forge. Okay. At least it's not me. Or at least it's not just me. I wasn't sure if it was something that I'd like reboot MTG about or something. But it did stop posting. Oh, you're round one. Whatever. Yeah, I'll I'll see if I can put a nightbot and you can hook me up with a hook me up with some sweet shark facts. I'm down for that. Yeah, that force will art though. It's one of all MTG but but you know how it works. Yeah, I'm I'm totally out of the loop on all the, uh, all the bot stuff. I only have, <clears throat> I only have MTG bot implemented because, like, when I started streaming way back when, and I had, like, Chyleth and another mod help me out with it. What is my opponent playing? Hey, what's up, Spider Space? How's it going? Uh, so we're gonna play a land here. I'm... What is my opponent doing? Basic Island, Basic Swamp. I want to Aether Vial plus Revoker, but I don't know what I want to revoke. Watch enough to... But I watch... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're in You're in here a very good chunk of the time. I would, I would be happy with... <laughs> I'd be happy with letting you tinker with that. I'll get it. I'll get it done at some point. Anyway, um, file revoke. What? Just death ray shaman. Or they remove force. Oh yeah, I was paying attention. They removed a brainstorm. Doesn't help me at all. I think I just. I'm gonna put it on like. Deathrite Shaman? They could be, like, Blue-Black Reanimator or something. Or, but, but like, so Force of Will doesn't, means not Storm. I feel like, like, Pile would not have, like, it's very unlikely to just go basic into basic with no fetch lands. But, I think that's my best guess. It's just, like, they're more likely to be a Deathrite Shaman deck than Blue-Black Reanimator. Cost living over the weekend at the GP. Ugh, the worst. How did you do at the GP? Do you have a? I saw the that you got you got a deck tech. Like they looked at your at the, the list that won the modern challenge or whatever. They had it up during the stream at some point. Okay, so they're like Alluren or food chain or something. What's happening? Okay, so they're food chain. Cool. So I'm kind of bummed that my revoker is now in Deathrite Shaman, but okay. You should call me for a fish. You're live for top in most of the tournament? Oh. That's easy first. Sweet. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a really good record. You are way better at that deck than I am, let me tell you. Although we did we did manage to 4 1. Did I play it on Friday? I think I did. But I've been having like the worst time with that. But I'm I'm horrendously unlucky, so I've not been getting reasonable results. But we've been getting better. Now let's punch. 
I think I just want to recruit another Revoker? To revoke Food Chain or something? Yeah, yeah, I was playing it on Friday. During that, during that huge lull in the coverage and stuff, because there was like that two hour gap where no one got to do anything for some reason. I could have played a quick GTA that turn, but it doesn't think it mattered. What am I recruiting? Pony's definitely on food chain, so... Griffin, Griffin, Scourge. I think I might have to just get Flicker Wisps. I can always Flicker Wisp my Revoker to put it on food chain instead. Just get Flicker Wisps. Yeah, so they give like everyone free entry to another GP or something like that. Seems sweet, at least. Obviously, they have to make up for the horrendous, the horrendous way that that GP went on the first day. You can just like cast a three four here and kind of stonewall me. I could plow it. Seems like it's kind of atrocious. Cause it's just like gain three life, flicker their stallo. Yeah, it looked like it was long. Oh, we have a new shark that you're showing off to the to the chat. And this one's horrifying because it can literally eat you. I don't know if I want to plow this. I think I do. I can give this GTA online after. But no, because I'm going to flick away with this recruiter. Hmm. Shark is love, shark is life. <laughs> Too many things going on. Uh, you have a shark eating another shark. Let's, let's calm down there. So I could flicker wisp recruiter, get a revoker, and also port them? That seems fine actually. what I port here. I think these are all their, typically all the basics out of food chain. So I think regardless of, like, if they have a fourth land, they'll be able to cast whatever spell. I'm obviously not taking them off of a color, but I am taking them off of Mist Hollow Griffin cast, which could be relevant, but I'd take them off of Mist Hollow Griffin cast with any port. So maybe I'm supposed to put the green to beat food chain, but they can't just food chain combo me this turn. And then I can go get a I guess technically they could food chain combo me this turn if they go food chain like death right into something into um into eternal scourge. You think that the M nineteen bugler guy will be any good for us in modern? I'm not sure. It seems like a little bit. I feel I feel like you want to be leaning less on Eldrazi if you're doing if you're playing with bugler. Just cast a Mist Hollow, sure. Because it only finds power two or less, so it's already awkward enough with Flicker Wisp. It gets even more awkward with stuff like Resto or Eldrazi Displacer or Thought Not Seer. Alright, so what am I doing? I only lost connection to the game. Interesting. I'm gonna wasteland them at least. I know that. Uh, lost connection and F6. Interesting. So I could. So if I play the GTA at least, I think I'm equipping it and attacking with the Wisp and the Revoker. Yeah, it's just a question of is it good enough? Like, is it worth building around a non-Eldrazi build? And I think the answer is no. I think, if anything, it's just, like, good in humans, and that's about it. I 
think I'm down to equipping to Recruiter, honestly. I get to kill the Mist Hollow? No, that actually uses up all the charge counters, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure humans will play it, but I think, if anything, it's best in humans. Did one ever get their connection back, or are they still gone? I guess they might still be gone. Didn't, yeah. Other, oh, okay, opponent's back. Yeah, printing it as a human is kind of a, a gross thing. Printing it as like a core or something even. Or just not. Just stop printing good cards that happen to be human. It is pretty gross. Eventually, they, if they keep doing stuff like that, something's gonna go wrong. Alright, so my, assuming my opponent is food chain. Yeah, they need to be really careful what they print as humans. That's definitely true. I think I just want to flicker my revoker onto food chain at this point. I think I need to stop getting value here and just not get comboed out. Yeah, humans are definitely getting dangerous if they just keep printing good cards that happen to be humans. One day we'll get we'll get my dream of a, like a two drop with rest in peace, a two drop creature with rest in peace on it, and it'll be a human and it'll be super busted. They have food chain plus like abrupt decay here. Man. I'll let them go off if they have. Um, what's it called, then? If they have Ballista, they have Ballista. Which I imagine they do. Worst case, though, they just get to put in, like, two Metals and a Scourge, but I'll just let them go off. I can sit and relax with chat. Yeah, there's definitely a good show we get Stoneforge back, I think. There's been <clears throat> a big push with a lot of the community bringing Stoneforge back after uh, how poorly... Not, I guess not poorly, but how little impact Bloodbraid and Jace had on the format. I can definitely see something like Stoneforge coming back. And if that's the case, it definitely starts to get interesting on what exactly you're playing in Death and Taxes variants. It's like whether it's worth it to play Arbiter at all. I think it's worth it to... I think it, it's easy to cut Arbiter in like Black White Eldrazi Taxes. Oh, opponent's Dream Image. Alright, cool. Not gonna make my opponent go through that. You mean, I mean, you just jam Batter Skull, but how much else? Probably like a sword or two. You just jam in like four Stone Forge, a Batter Skull, like a sword or something. Feast and Famine is probably decent in Modern as opposed to Legacy. Fire Eyes is probably still fine. Yeah, you could probably shave off a lot of the top end since you don't need to grind as, bad, as badly because Stone Forge is a very good grindy card. You can stop playing, like, Restoration Angels and stuff in, in Mono White Taxes. And then suddenly your Leon Roberts and Stone Forges have tension, and then it gets awkward there. Alright, I need to figure out what I'm sideboarding here. Suggest those? Probably. Might be Cataclysms. Trying to take them off of a bunch of lands might not be irrelevant. GJ probably sucks. Um, plow. Plows are pretty bad. Plow only hits their death rate. Yeah, I can see just cutting these plows. I can see boarding a Cataclysm just because this matchup is not good. And just being able to, like, stone rain them a couple times. Although, no, Cataclysm is probably not worth it. I'll just run back this 60. Because... The only the only way Cataclysm is good is if they don't have like a a Griffin in play as well, and you get to like stone rain them a bunch. It's really kind of a niche scenario, and we'll just keep. This hand is 
not great. But I'm also really tired, and I don't think I'm playing around five, even if we win this one, if we would get to two two. And it's unlikely we're gonna win. Food chain is a really bad matchup. I like the idea of bugler and blue. Blue, blue it could be interesting because you could have stuff like. Um, Trying to think of words here. Like spell queller, reflector mage, sort of stuff. Meddling mage. Yeah, exactly. Reflector mage, queller. But then suddenly you're playing like how many three drops are in this deck now? Reflector mage, spell queller, and bugler are all three drops. I'm just gonna like slam a food chain on two. Please turn two me, opponent. Oh man, are we getting turn two'd? I don't know, opponent's just like playing a food chain to kill me. To kill me next turn. Let's draw Leonin Relic Border. That's not Leona Relic Mortar. Green Hierarch. Yeah, then suddenly, like, green-white. Green White, green -white Taxes might actually be a, a reasonable way to push, like, Stoneforge better. I've never been partial to Green White Taxes just because it felt so Maverick-y to me. But I could, like... It might just be one of the better... Oh, I mean, if Silver Drew gets unbanned, I'm going to be trying it, like, every single color splash possible. Just, like, a bunch of nonsense Stoneforge decks for, like, weeks after that unbanning. And we're probably just dead here, but... Prelate doesn't beat anything because they already have Fuchin in play. Can't even, like, Wasteland them to try to get them to not get something. Eh. What you got, opponent? Yeah, but then, again, if you're like, Geist now, you're just like, all these, this mess of... <sighs> this mess of uh, three drops. The opponent's griffoning. Yeah, they just can exile their death right to kill me now. As long as they have... As long as they have the, the win condition, which I assume they do. Worst case, they just have like two Mist Halls and a Scourge in place still, as well. Alright. Well, we're likely dead. Opponent says GG in chat. I would like to see verification. I don't want to like. I don't want to BM my opponent, but I also don't like preemptively scooping when my opponent doesn't. I'm gonna just go find someone to host while this is going on. Since we are, we're definitely gonna. I don't, I'm not gonna play the fifth match tonight. It's like midnight. I usually do play the fifth match, but our games were very long today. Just take a break instead. Find some legacy action, perhaps. MPG Arena. Oh, there's me. RPTQ prep. Oh yeah, the second RPTQ is like this weekend, right? Something like that. All this. Why is everyone playing Arena? Opponent, I imagine, is working their way up to 40 mana at this point to kill me with a Ballista. But I, the, the unfortunate part of Moto versus Offline Magic is that my opponent cannot prove to me that they have a Ballista in their hand until they cast it for 20. Because there's no, like, reveal your hand to your opponent button. Modern Blue Eye Miracles? Eh. Man. Am I dead? Did they get me? They're just playing a pretend. Alright, I'll concede to that. That's fine. You got it. Opponent showing me they have a Ballista. If they don't need to play it for 20, I will lose. He can cast everyone. Can you see that he has it? But then, like, 
if I'm if I'm a jerk, I just don't concede, right? That's probably merit. Oh yeah, we're talking about going back to the modern. Yeah, lingering souls could be interesting in like black white Eldrazi, because souls pick up equipment really well. If you play black white Eldrazi Texas with like souls and stone forges, then you're like playing a weird black white mid range deck with just like Thalia's in it. <clears throat> so yeah, it's on my opponent. My opponent does not want to cast a uh, ballista for like one or zero or something to say, oh, I have this in my hand. Now can you scoop? Because then I can just not scoop and be, and be a dick about it. Of course, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. But there are definitely some people that would. But I also don't want to concede if my opponent doesn't have a ballista there because there's still a chance we can win. Probably very low, but. So by playing it for 10 there, they don't have to go through the whole process, but I'm honestly not beating a Ballista on 10 anyway. They just, like, wipe my board and whatever. They can just, like, pump it with 4 mana and stuff every turn. Yeah, there's going to be, like, a Dead Gale that's not even necessarily leaning into Eldrazi anymore. You could just play... There's just a lot of things you can do with Stoneforge. I need to start brewing Stoneforge decks. Hopefully it'll get unbanned. God, is there anyone that's, like, playing cool stuff? Everyone's playing Cube or Arena. And as much as I respect the Cube, because it looks pretty dope. It's a Vintage Cube, right? Vintage Cube looks pretty sick. But no one's playing anything cool. I guess, like, Modern. Is this guy doing, like, a... 365 day magic challenge. Like the thing that Caleb Durward did a couple years back. I will hoax him. He's playing. It's like Blue Moon. Modern. Eh. Yeah. There are people who value empty Joe wins very high. Yeah, exactly. There are definitely people that if you played your ballista on one to be like, hey, can you concede? They were like, alright, nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and try and eke these eight dollar Eight dollars, twelve dollars, whatever out of my stream. It's always whatever. My opponent definitely had the win there. It's not my opponent's fault that Moto Interface does not give him give him or her a legitimate way to to reveal to me that I am in fact dead. But that's that's neither here nor there. Anyway, let's uh let's just wrap up the stream for now. <laughs> it's all sorts. All right, so this is a fun stream day. We didn't do we didn't do that well. We got we didn't even make it to the two two that we usually do. We kind of got beaten down, but we lost. What did we lose to? Miracles, which was like close and a little bit unlucky. Mardu Pyro, similar case, and I think Mardu Pyro is probably not a favorable matchup for this deck. And then Fujin, which is just a, just not a good matchup at all. Very bad matchup. Thanks for hanging out, Iaz, as well as everybody else. So, we're going to end the stream here. I usually go down to the five games, but again, like midnight, I'm tired. I want to go to bed like any other rational human being at midnight. So, <clears throat> thank you all for hanging out today. Hope you had a good time. If you if you like the channel and you want to support it, you can hit the follow button. It costs you totally nothing. Helps you know when I'm going live. Helps other people find my content as well. Other things you can do are subscribe or donate. Subscriptions get you the sweet Thali emote. Yaz is showing off. She sits on the sideboard usually or in the text box. Uh, donations, I'm more than willing to take on whatever Death and Taxes style cards or color splashes or formats you want to see. You want to see Red White Taxes and Legacy, whatever modern playing Hero of Blade Hold or some nonsense. Go right ahead and just let me know and I'll be more than willing to to hear your suggestions. So we're going to go host this person playing Blue Moon. They're on a 365-day magic challenge. If you're familiar with what the thing that Caleb Durward did a couple years ago to get big, you like stream consistently, like actual every day for the whole year. Pretty crazy stuff. So give, give this guy some support. Uh, I'll catch you guys all tomorrow for a modern stream. Not sure what I'm going to play yet. We'll kind of play by ear. But uh, I'll see you guys all later. Oh, and Kenji did one too. Yeah, the, the two of the biggest streamers in it. Like it, it kind of puts your name on the map a little bit if you're that consistent. Anyway, catch you guys all later. <laughs>